friends, this is Fire on Pop, and we're here today with another interesting installment of the uh, Armed Citizen Stories, and today they're coming right out of, again, uh, the first Freedom Magazine, that's an NRA publication. Uh, once again, I'll give it another plug. If you're not a member of the NRA, get on a computer, get online, and become a member. And you'll get this, you won't have to listen to me babble on. But anyway, we're going to go right to about the center of the book, which is the Armed Citizen Stories of the Month. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into these. Pharmacist Terrell Milby was working at a Westside Jiffy uh, pharmacy when a young man entered and asked to speak with him about a list of medications. The man stood at the consultation window and handed Milby a napkin. On the napkin was a handwritten note requesting unspecified number of painkillers and syringes. The list also included a warning, I have a gun. Milby said he didn't re believe the would-be robber actually had a gun and showed him his own firearm. Milby then ordered the man to get on the floor. Upon seeing the pharmacist's firearm, the robber turned and fled. Milby called the police and was, and was able later to identify the man who attempted to rob the pharmacy. The suspect was then arrested and charged with first-degree robbery. You can never be too careful, Milby said, of the incident. You never know who's going to walk in. And that was in the news courier, Athens, Alabama. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Athens, Alabama. Anyway, perfect outcome. No shots fired. Uh, uh, just at the sight of a gun usually calms people down. <laughs> and they come to their senses really quick. So anyway, let's continue right on. Four teens on a crime spree forced their way into a home of a 72-year-old Morris Reeves. Two of the teens wore ski masks and one yielded a rifle. Reeves heard the break-in and take place and met the youths with his own firearm. Reeves fired two shots at the intruders, causing them to flee to a nearby car and drive away. The four suspects were later identified from images taken by Reeves' security camera. They were each arrested and charged with one felony count of kidnapping, robbery, and a dangerous weapon, first-degree burglary, conspiracy to commit robbery with a dangerous weapon, conspiracy to commit burglary, breaking and entering a motor vehicle, larceny, and breaking it, larceny after breaking and entering, and misdemeanor assault by pointing a gun. Reeves was not injured during the home invasion. That was in Charlotte, and. The Charlotte Observer in Lenore, North Carolina. Now, boy, that, oh, let's go over that list again. They were charged. Uh, they, they were each arrested and charged with felony count of kidnapping, robbery with a dangerous weapon, first-degree burglary, conspiracy to commit burglary with a dangerous weapon, conspiracy to commit burglary, breaking and entering a motor vehicle, larceny after breaking and entering and, and misdemeanor assault by pointing a gun. Reeves was not injured. <laughs> what a list. Uh, I guess uh, the police were pissed, and so was Reeves. Anyway, I'm glad to see the 72-year-old man was able to protect himself and, uh, and come out of that unharmed. A 56-year-old man heard the doorbell ringing at his home just before 1 p.m. When the homeowner failed to recognize the man outside his door, he ignored it. A few minutes later, the suspect threw an object through a glass front door and entered the home. The homeowner responded to the sound with two, two men struggled. The homeowner pulled out his handgun and fired twice, striking the intruder in the shoulder. A delivery truck driver saw the scuffle from outside, heard the shots, and made the initial 911 call. The intruder was arrested after receiving medical treatment, and it was reported that he is expected to be charged with first-degree burglary. And that was in Issa, Issaquah, Washington. Say that three times fast. Issaquah. I-S-S-A-Q-U-A-H, Washington. Tiffany Simo and Douglas Romero were delivering newspapers around 3 a.m. when they noticed a vehicle following them. When they stopped the truck to prepare a few papers for delivery, a man jumped out of the vehicle behind them and charged them as he fired shots from a 380 caliber pistol. He, be he began banging on the driver's window of the delivery truck and demanding they open the door. 
Romero grabbed his own gun from a lockbox in the truck and fired through the window. The assailant was later treated with multiple gunshot wounds and then charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and discharging a firearm in public. And that was uh, in the Ledger, Winter Haven, Florida. Florida. Uh, I'm not even going to get into the whole Zimmerman uh, these days, anytime you mention Florida. Uh, uh, and it's, we're going to get into that in a second about this. Anyway. A resident told police he was upstairs around 2 p.m. when he heard three men kick in the front door and enter his home. The intruders attacked the, res the resident and placed him in an upstairs closet while they ransacked the home. What the intruders didn't know was that that particular closet was where the resident kept his gun. <laughs> when, <laughs> well, that's great. When he thought the intruders were gone, the resident left the closet armed with a firearm. Downstairs, he encountered one of the men and the two exchanged gunfire. The intruder was stuck in the, struck in the shoulder and leg. He fled, but collapsed a few blocks away. The other two intruders fled as well. The resident was not injured. A neighbor commented on the incident saying, what happened today is exactly what guns are supposed to do, to protect your home and defend your life and your family. Amen. Houston Chronicle, Houston, Texas. Good hooray for Texas. Jimmy Foster was returning home when he found multiple suspects loading his property into a car outside. After Foster exited his vehicle, the burglars got in their car and ran Foster's vehicle before driving uh, toward him. Foster fired several shots at the vehicle, striking one of the tires and causing the burglars to flee. Police were called in the search involving canine units and a helicopter led to the arrest of three burglars. Foster was reportedly not injured during the burglary. And that was in the News Sentinel, Clinton, Tennessee. Great articles, great stories of people defending uh, their life, their property, and their families. Uh, and uh, these two older gentlemen did absolutely the right thing in defending themselves. Uh, when we get into this, uh, uh, this new debate because of the Zimmerman thing on this uh, Stand your ground law. I'm, from, I'm here, as most of you know, in New York. We don't have a stand your ground law. We have a duty to retreat. Um, unfortunately, you can retreat only so far. You come once you come up my steps. I'm I'm sunk. I'm up here. There is no place to retreat uh, unless I want to jump out a two-story window. So, uh, uh, but the, I wish we had the stand your ground law here. Then I can confront them when they're coming in my front door, not when they got my back to the to the window upstairs. Anyway, uh, you, you, everybody out there has got to get involved. We we can't allow them to use these uh, to let a good crisis go to waste by not implementing some more crazy or getting rid of some good laws that we have or implementing some more restrictions on gun rights. This is not a gun right issue. It was not a racist issue. It was a being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Anyway, that's my two cents on that story as well. Hope you enjoyed the stories. Look forward to reading them for you again next month. This is Fire on Pop. Be safe out there, and God bless. Bye now.